Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Kelly at K-Town, and today we're going to be talking about normal distributions. They were originally called Gaussian distributions, which is just not as pretty as normal. Eventually, we decided to just call them normal distributions so we'd know that everything else is abnormal. Now, you're like, what? What's going on? This is probably brand new to you. So if you were ever thinking of going into AP stats, this is a topic that is really prevalent in AP stats. So if that was kind of something that was on your radar, then pay attention today. Figure out if you know what's going on. It's not too bad. You will need your calculator as we do this. This is calculator intensive, very heavy. Uh, but what does normal mean? Well, if we cut to the chase, these are called normal because they're not abnormal. These occur all the time in nature. Um, a distribution is a graph that shows how often values occur. So when you look at these graphs, they're kind of the same shape. If you notice, they look like a hill and we have a point that's high and it's in the middle, and then the ends or the tails of it, there is less area underneath the curve. Okay, now if you look at three different types, this curve right here, all the way on the right, this curve you can tell that everything is close together, whereas this curve on the left, you can see it's all spread apart. So how the, the data is spread out, that's kind of important. Normal distributions, regardless of of how they're spread out, they're always symmetric, which means you can draw a line down the middle and uh, they mirror each other, and they're shaped like a bell a little bit. They're called bell curves sometimes. Okay, so those are normal distributions. They occur all the time in nature. It could be the weight of a certain animal or the speed of an animal. You have, you know, most of them are gonna be in the middle and that's why it's, you know, it kind of peaks in the middle. And then the tails could represent either the really fast animals or the really slow ones or depending on whatever we're looking at. Um, here's an animal, it's a cow, <laughs> it's a cow. We're gonna use, to when we describe our normal distributions, there's two things we need to know. We need to know where the center of it is, okay? That's the mean, and if you remember, the mean means the average. So, uh, let's write that down here. So, that's the mean is the average, if you forgot. And the mean measures the middle of the distribution, and we're going to use a Greek letter called mu. Now, it's like a cow. Cow says mu, but this is mu. So mu represents the mean. So when you see mu equals 3, you know that the mean equals 3. If you see mu equals 10, the mean equals 10. Okay, now, not only do we need to know where the center is, we need to know how spread out the data is. And for that, we're going to use a different Greek letter called sigma. This is a lowercase sigma. And it represents the standard deviation, which if you remember from algebra one tells you how spread out the data is. So look at these two different curves here. The curve on the right has a very high peak and all the data is squished together. That's because the standard deviation is smaller. Okay, a small standard deviation means it's not spread out very much. So it kind of all clumps on top of itself. But if the standard deviation is spread out, is, is greater, that means the data is spread out more. Okay, so we have, I'm gonna be talking about mu. It's kind of a half mu thing. You gotta practice making it. It's kind of like mu, all right? Mu, mu, that's why there's a cow there. Okay, so example one wants us to draw and label a normal distribution that has a mean of 50 and the standard deviation is 15. Okay, so to do that, first thing we need is a horizontal axis here. All right, it's like a number line, the x-axis. And then we're gonna draw the bell curve on top of that. How many attempts do we need to draw a good bell curve? That's actually not too bad for me. I mean, mine aren't good though, but you're gonna have to practice. Um, if you notice, like as it goes up, about halfway through, it starts, it changes from being like a U to an upside down U. That point's kind of important, all right? But we'll get to that in a second. We want to label this so that mu is 50. Well, the mean of these are always in the middle. So the middle here, I'm going to put a 50. All right, I'm going to write over here, mu equals 50. And also we know that sigma, which is the standard deviation, equals 15. So that means on either side of 50. And remember when I talked about that point here that's about halfway down where things change from being you know, a u to an upside down u? That's about right here. That's about one standard deviation. So on either side, that distance, I'm looking at that distance there, that is 15 units away from 50. So we do 50 plus 15, and that'll give us 65. And we also subtract 50 minus 15. 
and that gives us 35. And we just want to be close. Okay, we won't penalize you if you're a little bit off, but it does have to look, you know, it's got to be close. All right, so we're going to do this two times. We go one standard deviation, another standard deviation means going another 15 units. So that's going to be about here. That'll give me an 80. And down here, that'll give me about a 20. All right, so this is a labeled normal distribution where mu is 50 and sigma is 15. Now, I'm going to do a little bit more. I'm going to switch to green right now. I'm going to tell you some things about this. You can label it to kind of help you remember. Now, if I take the mean and I draw a line down the middle, each half of these, uh, each side, each half of this curve is equal to 50% of the distribution. The 50% of the data is on each side of the half. Now, we're going to learn something called the 68-95-99 rule. And the first rule is that 68% of the data falls within one standard deviation. So if I divide this up one, oh, that is ridiculous. One, let's go, I'm gonna go up. Maybe my pad will work a little better. All right, so one standard deviation. That is 68% of the data is between here. So I know 68% of these scores, whatever they are, are between 35 and 65. That's about 68% of the whole you know, population. Now, because we have the mean going down the middle, I know this is symmetric, that means that this must be 34, and this must also be 34%, right? Because it's half of 68. All right, well, what's our next rule? Let's go down and look at the rule for a second. The 68-95-99 rule. 68% of the data is within one standard deviation. We just talked about that. 95% of the data is within two standard deviations of the mean. So I'm going to go back where we have two standard deviations. I'm gonna change color here. Two is blue. This is two standard deviations away from the mean. That is 95% of the data, 95% is from here to here. Okay. Well, can we figure out what these are? Pause the video and figure out how much is here and how much is there. Go. Did you get 13.5%? Now, how do we do this? I took 95%, that's within two standard deviations. I took out the 68 by subtracting, and I'm left with 27%. That means each one of these must be 13.5%. All right, now what about here? Well, if we look at our rule, within three standard deviations is 99 point. It's basic, look at that. It's practically all of the data is within three standard deviations of the mean. Okay, so when your mama told you that you were three standard deviations below the mean, she wasn't being very nice because that is like really far down here. We understand what that means. Okay, so um, second example we're going to do, it says the number of minutes needed to finish the unit 12 test follow a normal distribution and the mean is 60. So mu equals 60 and the standard deviation or sigma equals 10. All right, so the first part, we want to draw and label this. So I'm going to try my best here. We're going to freehand it. Horizontal line. And then we're going to draw the bell curve. All right, not too bad, right? I mean, hey, not too bad. In the middle is mu. Let's write this up here. So we know that mu is 60 and sigma is 10 because they told us. So as we label this in the very middle, we put 60. And then about halfway down the slope here, it's got to be the same distance. We have to be symmetric. So I'm going to try my best, even though it looks like I'm a little bit off. But that'll be 70. And this will be 80. We're going up by tens because that's what the standard deviation is. We also have to go down by tens. And as I said, mine's a little bit off, but it should be symmetric. It's pretty close. And if you're pretty close, then, well, you know, we'll give it to you. So part B, what proportion of students will finish the test somewhere between 40 and 80? Let me go out another standard deviation here. 90. All right, barely see that. But between 40 and 80. So if we're looking at 40 to 80, that is how many standard deviations? Here's mu right here. They're going one, two on that side and two on that side. So we know from our rule that within two standard deviations is 95% of the data. So the answer to this question, what proportion of students will finish the test somewhere between 40 and 80? That's within two standard deviations. That is about 95%. Okay, and we can write about most of our animal, 
most of our answers, I almost said animals, most of our answers are going to be approximations. They're going to be close. So this one is about 95%. Okay, part C. If 50 students take the test, how many should finish between 70 and 80? Well, if you remember, that was that one little piece like right here that I had you pause the video between 70 and 80. If you go back and you look at the curve, that is 13.5% of the curve. We figured that out above, right? So we need 13.5% of 50. All right, so this is going to give you 13.5% of 50, which is approximately what? 6.25 students. Okay, so about six. So we could say about six students. You have to round correctly. Now, part D. Suppose a student takes 70 minutes to complete the test. What percentile is the student at? Now, this might be a new vocabulary word where you've maybe heard it before, but you don't really get it. The percentile is the value at which a given percent falls below. Now, that is weird to think about. The value at which a given percent falls below. So, in other words, in this problem, it's the number of minutes in which a given percent falls below. And uh, what, what are we doing here? The value, what percentile? Suppose they take 70 minutes. Okay, so 70 minutes is right here. So what percentile? They want to know what percentile this is, this score. So what percent fall below it, this area, all the way over? Well, you know, going back to the curve above, I'm going to make this easy. I'm going to draw a line down the middle here. I know that this half is 50%. Because remember, the mean cuts it in half, so this has to be 50. And what would this area right here? Let me go back so you know what I'm looking at. I'm looking at this part right here. What was that area? That was 34%. And remember we got that because it was half of 68. So in this question, this is 34%. So we have 50% and 34%. If we That's all the area that is to the left or below that 70. So that is going to be called the 84th percentile. Now, you must be going, oh my goodness, there's no way I'm going to keep track of all this. Don't you worry. I got you with a calculator. Calculator is going to really hook us up for this section. So right now, you need to pay attention. You need to pay attention because this calculator is really, really going to be what you lean on in this whole lesson. If you don't have a calculator down, you're not getting these questions right. So if the question asks you for a percent or a proportion then we're going to use what's called the normal cumulative density function, or basically a normal curve. It'll tell you the area under the normal curve. Okay, your answer will always be a decimal that's less than one because it's asking for a percent or a proportion. But if the problem is asking for what score or what weight or what value or how long in minutes or something like that, it has to give you a percent or it gives you the proportion, like the 80th percentile that's giving you a proportion uh, then we're going to use inverse norm okay your answer is always going to be a raw score okay whether it's the weight or the height or something of that nature now the syntax here's how they go in the calculator if we're going to use normal cdf we need to put the lower bound the upper bound and then mu and sigma and luckily the calculator is going to remind you that so we'll get to that in one second for negative and positive infinity, we're going to use negative 1E99 and 1E99. Um, again, we're going to talk about this in a second, but negative 1E99 in your calculator, what is that's scientific notation. So what that means is negative 1 times 10 to the 99th power, which is negative a very large number. So that's as close as our calculator can get to negative infinity because we don't have an infinity sign. For positive infinity, we're just going to use positive 1 well, we're going to use 1E99, but that's 1 times 10 to the 99th power. That's like, that's that's really big, okay? Good enough. Now, that is for normal CDF. For inverse norm, we're going to use, it, the syntax is just the percent, and then mu, and then sigma. So your question now is, well, where do I find these things? These two functions are under, you have to hit second, and then distributions, which are above the variables. So let's do that. We'll do that all together. Hey, no reason to... Hey, don't get all grumpy. We're going to do it together. Second distribution right here. And if you notice, we have three choices that have the word normal. We ignore the first one. Okay? Ignore the first one. Normal PDF. That is not a function that we're going to use in these problems. We're just going to use normal CDF or inverse norm. 
So if I go down, let's look at normal CDF first. And what this is, oh, you can see someone had infinity in there. Get rid of that. But normal CDF, it's going to ask you for a lower bound, an upper bound, a mean. Notice we got mu right there and sigma, the standard deviation. So what I'm going to do is go back and do one of the earlier problems that we already did. Ooh, this one right here. It said, what proportion of students will finish between 40 and 80 if mu is 60 and sigma is 10? So let's do that in the calculator. We got about 95% when we did it without the calculator. Let's see what the calculator tells us. So the lower bound was 40 and the upper bound was 80. The mean was 60 and the standard deviation was 10. When we hit paste, we get this output right here. Now, if you have a TI-83 and it's not as fancy, then you're not gonna get that middle screen I just showed you. You're gonna go right to this and you're gonna have to type out 40 and then hit the comma, which is above the seven, and then 80, and hit the comma, and then 60 and 10. You, your calculator can do it, but you're just, you don't get that fancy middle screen that tells you lower bound and upper bound. You're just gonna have to memorize that, sorry. All right, so we get 95.4%. You can see that's very close to what we got to before. All right, let's practice another one. The other question was, now let's do D here. Suppose a student takes 70 minutes, what their percentile. Remember percentile is the proportion of the curve that's below you. So a 70, the proportion, we figured it out and got the 84th percentile. So we want to do that with a calculator now, just to practice. So to do that, distribution, let's go to normal CDF because we're finding the area under the curve and we need to put in negative infinity. So we're going to put negative one and see above the, see the little uh, comma right there? We got the two E's. That's negative one times 10 to the 99th. That's negative infinity. And we wanted to go up to 70. And what's nice is when you do one problem, the other values kind of stay in there. We got 84th percentile, is that correct? Well, it's actually 84th, 0.13, whatever, but that's close enough for us. So those two functions are finding the area under the curve, okay? The area under the curve. Now, what if it works the other way? And they say, oh, so what value would be the 10th percentile? That would be the other way we could do it. Well, let's do that. Let's find the 10th. Let's find the score that is the 10th percentile with these right here. So back in the calculator, I'm going to go second distribution. And if we're working backwards, if I'm telling you 10th percentile, that means that you already know the area under the curve. So we're going to put 0.10. And you have to retype in the mean and standard deviation. And we're just going to leave the tail on left for all of these. All right. Now, uh, if you have a TI-83, you're going to have to type this out with commas. And you're just going to have to remember it. The first number is the area. The next one is the mean and then the standard deviation. You don't need to put that left there if you have an 83. But if you notice, we get 4718 is our answer here. So if I wanted the 10th percentile, it'd be like 47. So one thing I can tell is that my picture, I probably should have spread out my standard deviation a little bit more because 47 looks about here, but in reality, it's down here. It's by the 10th percentile. We just figured that out. So, you know, your, your picture has got to be close. They don't have to be perfect. Mine are never perfect, so don't feel bad. All right, let's try example three. Suppose the systolic blood pressure for an adult male above the age of 55 is normally distributed with a mean of, all right, so as soon as we start getting these problems, the mean of 145, I'm gonna draw the picture. All of these, we gotta draw the picture. And we make a nice normal curve. So the mean is 145, perfect. Let's make that a little thinner. Man, I have this problem. I'm always like scrunching the right. Uh, gotta practice. But anyways, so the standard deviation is 20. If you notice 145 is, is mu, let's write down, we gotta label it. So mu is uh, 145, sigma is 20. So here's our curve, it's, it's labeled nicely. So if a 60 year old man is selected at random, find the probability that his blood pressure is between 140 and 160. So we're looking at like from here to here and it's kind of in the middle. Again, we're gonna use our calculator. So remember, we want to go second and then distribution, which is above the variables. We're going to choose choice two because we want to know a probability or a proportion of the curve. So the lower bound, they want to know between 140 and 160. 
So I'm going to type in 140 for the lower bound. I'm going to type in 160 for the upper bound. The mean in this problem is 145, and the standard deviation is 20. We hit enter, and there we go. We get 30.37207. So we're going to say 0.37. So I'm going to write that as a percent, about 37%. Now, greater than 170, bring back the calculator. So second, we hit variables. We want greater than 170. So the lower bound, if we do greater than 170, let's go back to our picture. Greater, like 170 is like here. And I want greater than. So this is the part of the curve that I want right here. So I want 170 up to infinity. I want the rest of that curve from 170 up to infinity. It's like the infinity war is going on. So we got 170. Now the upper bound, remember how to type infinity? We hit one, and then we use the, the exponential function that's above the, the comma, and we write 1E99. So that's 170 up to infinity. It's the same mean and the standard deviation. So you can just hit enter, and we get 10.56%. Now notice how I'm reading that. It's 0 0.1056. So which is about 10.56%. Okay, of that population. At what blood pressure? Is it asking for probability or a percent? No. What blood pressure? It's asking us for a score on the bottom. So we're gonna use inverse norm for this one. Inverse norm. You try it without me showing you. What blood pressure would be higher than 90%? So, let's erase that other stuff. So there's a score here, and it wants 90% of the curve. That's what we're figuring out. They're giving you 90% of the curve. They want to know what score will be at the 90th percentile. That's what they're asking you. So that's inverse norm. we got to put this in 0 0.90, and then mean and standard deviation. We'll do that one for your TI-83 people out there. If you're using a TI-84, then it looks like this. We go second, distribution. This one's inverse, because we want to score. The area, 0.9, okay, the mean is 145, 20 is the standard deviation. Remember, the tail is always going to be left. And we're given a score of about 170. Actually, if we look at it, it's about 171 if we round properly. So this is about a blood pressure of 171. All right, now the last one. If 4,000 adults above the age of 55 have their blood pressure checked, how many, so we, our final answer has to be a number of people, but how many would you expect to have a blood pressure less than 130? Okay, so 130 is in this range right here. We need to find the proportion of the curve. Let's draw it again. All right, so we got a nice normal curve. You have 140 in the middle, and we need to find, there's 130 right here somewhere. We gotta find this area right here under the curve. So we're looking for a percent. When we're looking for percents, we use normal CDF. So distribution, choose two. We wanna go from, we have to go left to right. So the lower bound, negative infinity, which is negative 1E99, up to 130. And then we have to put the mean and the standard deviation in again, which hasn't changed. We get about 0.2266. So 0 0.2266 or about 22.66%. But that doesn't answer the question because it says how many people, and they said there are 4,000 adults. So we need to do this times 4,000, and that'll tell me the total number of people that are below 130 for their blood pressure. So the good thing about a calculator, you can just do times 4,000, it'll take your last answer, and it will just multiply it for you. So final answer here is 906.5, 906.5, which is approximately 907 people. Okay, so that answers that question. So that's not too bad. Now we got one more, you're gonna pause the video. You do these, it's about Mr. Breast Pants. And then I will do them, and then we'll check your answers. Pause the video. Go ahead. Okay, so here's what I got. Uh, for the first one, what proportion of the pants are between 15 and 
20. So normal CDF on that, 15 to 20. Uh, the mean is 16 and standard deviation two. And that'll give me about, how are we gonna write that answer out? It's about 66.87%. So I'm gonna say it's about 66.9%. There's that answer. What proportion of the pants? Next one, what proportion are 18 inches long or less? So that means you want 18 and down. So that's our second calculation here. From negative infinity up to 18, because you always gotta work left to right, we have 16 and two. So the answer here, we get what, 84.13. So I'm gonna say about 84.1%. Next one, what is the length? Okay, so they're not giving us, you know, we're not finding a proportion, we're finding the length. They're giving us the 90th percentile. So we're gonna plug in, that's inverse norm. We plug in 0 0.90. Remember, always choose left if you have that option. If not, you just ignore, don't worry about it. And we're gonna get 18.56, but what is that? 18.56 what? This is about 18.56. It's looking for the length of pants. So we're gonna call that inches. All right, and then the last one, if he's owned 80 pair in the last 10 years, how many are longer than 20? So we first have to find the proportion. So we go 20 to infinity uh, with 16 and two, that gives us about 2.2%, we multiply that times 80, and then you get about 1.82 pair of pants. So we can round that. You know, that's about one or two pair of pants. And there you go, that's it. Hopefully this lesson was, you know, felt like it was normal. You have to learn the calculator. Go ahead and make sure you check your practice answers. This is not one that you can just be like, ah, I've done this before. All right, brand new stuff. This is Mr. Kelly in K-Town. Remember, it's nice to be important. More important to be nice. See ya!